Hey everyone, welcome back. And this is the third tutorial in the series of animating with Krita. So this is the first one where we actually start doing some drawing. The first two videos were about customizing and setting Krita up. Um, okay, so let's get started. Um, so I have a brand new canvas that's 1920 by 1080 pixels. Um, I don't like drawing or painting on just a blank white screen. Um, I'm like a lot of artists uh, where the, the white bothers me. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and um, I'm going to kind of give a little color fill here so we can sort of uh, see this here um, and just change things up and it just helps me out. So the first thing I want to do is I want to direct your attention down here to the timeline. Um, I have the layer one and the background and I'm going to uh, make sure that I'm on layer one and I'm on frame zero. Um, when I'm on frame zero, what I'm going to do is to be able to draw, you have to create a blank keyframe. Um, so for me, I set that up to be the period key. So when I press period, I create a new blank frame. And if I click over here on my timeline, you can just, if I zoom in, you can just see that now it has a blue outline going around it, but it's empty. And that means that a blank frame was created, but there's nothing actually on it. If I draw something now, um, you'll see that it now has filled in, telling me that there's something actually on it. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete that. If you didn't follow um, my previous tutorials, um, you would have to come over here into the animation uh, docker, and you would have to click on this button right here to create a blank frame. And that's why keyboard shortcuts are so important because you get to go so much faster and um, just less problems. Okay, so I want this uh, layer one to actually be my colored background. So I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna um, rename this layer. I can do it down here in the timeline or I can do it over here in the layers. So you just double click and I'm just gonna go ahead and call this uh, color BG, okay? And I'm gonna choose a color that I like. I'm gonna go ahead and choose kind of a muted blue. And then I'm just gonna go up here to the edit menu and just choose fill with foreground color. And there you go. So now that is there like that. And I'm just gonna go ahead and do a quick save. Okay. All right, so now I'm gonna make a new layer. So over here in my layers uh, toolbar, I'm gonna click on this little button here. It's a square with a plus symbol, and that creates a brand new layer. It's called layer two. I'm just gonna go ahead and re rename that, and I'll just call this uh, rough uh, anim. There we go. Okay, so uh, in the timeline down here, make sure that you click on frame zero. Uh, make sure it's there and make sure you add a new blank frame. For me, that is the period key. Okay, I'm gonna just move this up here so it's a little easier to see. Okay, so I'm gonna now change my uh, brush color. I'm gonna go ahead and go to a uh, white. There we go, something like that. All right, so hopefully you can see that on the screen and I can press delete and clear. Okay, so the brush I'm using, down here in the brush pickers, I am in the sketch category. And I find that this brush here, it's a blue pencil. It's just called the Pencil One Hard. Um, that's just a really good one. It's just very light. You can do some very light work. Uh, and then if you press harder, uh, you're gonna get just a very nice um, nice look to it. Um, and it's very quick and very responsive. And I like it, it works for me. You can obviously use any brush you want in Krita. And so there you go. All right, so let's cover the basics. Um, we're going to go ahead and do just kind of a bouncing ball um, and we're just going to have the ball that just kind of moves around on the screen. It's not going to be realistic and respecting physics and all that kind of stuff, um, but we're just going to go ahead and move it around so you can just get something moving on the screen. Just a, just a first time, okay? All right, so on frame zero, I want the ball to just be up here and I'm just going to make it about that size like that. So there we go. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click on another frame down here and it looks like I chose frame six, and I'm going to create a blank new keyframe. And you'll notice that frame zero disappeared. You can't see it anymore. And this is where you need something that animators call onion skinning. Um, and if you come down here in the timeline, right in the layer, you're gonna see a little light bulb here. 
it's just to the left of frame zero. So if I click on the little light bulb, then you'll actually see my um, previous frame right there. Now for a moment, I'm gonna hide the blue layer just so you guys can see it better. Okay, so there it is right there. So now I'm kind of second guessing using that blue, um, using that blue layer. Um, so maybe I'll, um, yeah, maybe I'll, ch maybe I'll change the color. Let me, um, let me go ahead and go back here. I'm just going to change the color on, um, on the frame. So I'm going to go back here to my color one. I apologize, everyone. Wasn't thinking about that. So I'll go ahead and I'll give it kind of a tan color. I kind of like that. Um, okay. Yeah, and we'll just do edit, fill with foreground color, and then there we go. Okay, so now, if you're following along closely, you might be thinking, hey, uh, your white circle that you drew there, it's, it's kind of hard to see. That's true. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my color towards black, and then I'm just going to click on, on my rough animation layer, which I'm on. I'm going to click on this icon right here. And then I can just basically draw right over it. And it will allow me to basically just draw that there. Now I could, it's a simple circle. I could just go ahead and draw it again. Um, but this is allowing me to just paint over it. And I don't have to think about it. And I showed you guys a cool new tool. So that icon that I just clicked on right there, um, that is letting me only paint where there were previously um, laid down pixels. So there we go over there. And I'm gonna now turn that feature off. Okay, so I'm going to go back to frame six. I'm on my rough animation layer. I'm on frame six, and I created a blank frame. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and say on frame six, I want the ball to just be like maybe over here. And there it is right there, and maybe it's hitting the ground. Great. Um, and you'll see that my onion skinning is working. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and jump ahead. Let's make the math easy. I'm going to go to frame 12. I'll create a blank new frame, and I'm going to go ahead and draw the ball up here. Uh, then I'll go ahead and maybe go to frame 18, create a blank new frame, and I'll go ahead and place the ball over here. Okay, so now, let me save. Now, if I go ahead and if I click up here where the numbers are on the timeline, you'll actually see um, that I've got all my frames here. And if I pause here, let me let me pause here. It's a little tough to see, but you can see if I hide the um, colored background, you can see it better. Uh, you can see that the red frames are the previous frames, the green frames are the future frames, the ones that are coming up. So I can really now see uh, where it's going, okay? Um, okay, so a couple of the basic animation controls. Over here in my animation toolbar, it says start frame is zero. I'm going to leave it at that, but you could set it to frame one if you really wanted to. End frame is 100. Well, I've only drawn up to 18 frames, so I'm going to click inside there and type in 18 and press return. And now it's only um, frame 18. I have controls down here where I can press play. So I'm going to just press play. And you'll see that it is, in fact, looping. And it's basically going through. And there are my keyframes there. OK, I'm going to stop that. Um, OK, if you need to delete a frame, let's go into that before we uh, wrap up here. So for instance, my second keyframe is on frame 6. If I decide I want that happening a little earlier, I can just click and drag and move it, and now it's on frame four. So it's just happening a little bit soon. So you can click and drag with your mouse or your pen, and you can reorder or change the timing of those. So you can make them happen sooner or later, and it's pretty fast. And there you go. Okay, so let's use some of the keyboard shortcuts we made in the previous video. So I made jumping to my keyframes be my up arrow and my down arrow. So if I go to my up arrow, that just jumps to all the previous keyframes. And this is actually much like traditional animators where they are um, flipping between their pages of paper, old school style, and they can go ahead and they can check and just see, 
are their keyframes working out? Now, if I use the left arrow key and the right arrow key, sorry about that popping up on my screen there. I'll go ahead and uh, pause that for a second. If I use my left arrow key and my right arrow key, you'll see down on my timeline, I'm just moving ahead or moving backwards um, one frame at a time. Not keyframes, but just one frame. And so that can be helpful once we start getting more frames um, in our animation. Okay, so that's where those are helpful. And I'm going to go ahead and just save. Okay, again, if you don't like onion skinning, you can temporarily turn it off by clicking on the little light bulb here, and that just turns it on and off. Um, you might see down here in the animation toolbar uh, this little onion um, button. Those are the onion skinning settings, um, and, and they're great. Um, I'm not going to cover them right now, um, but basically for most beginners, they're just good right out of the box, um, and you're good to go, um, but that's what they are. Uh, but turning on and off onion skinning, that's a little light bulb here, uh, much like a light box that an animator would use. Okay, so if I want to now, uh, to finish this video up, I would come here and I would say, okay, in between um, frame 0 and 6's keyframes, I'd want to do what are called my breakdown frames. So I'd want to maybe go to frame 3, which is about halfway, and I would create a new blank frame. And now I'd figure, okay, where is that going to go? So maybe the ball is going to go like this and it's right there. Now I'm not happy where I drew it. So I could undo and I could redraw it and redraw and redraw and redraw, but that's not really what it's about. There's a great tool here in Krita. Um, it's this tool right over here um, and it's just the move tool. It's four arrows and you can just click and drag and you can move it wherever you want. And so it's just moving it and I can do that and I can go like that. There we go. Now I'll just press B and get back to my brush tool. Okay, so that's frame three. Um, now I'll go ahead and go to the next keyframe, that's six. Now I'll go ahead and I'll find another frame here. Let's see, I'm going to move this back to 12. There we go. Okay, so maybe on frame nine, I'll go ahead and create a blank frame, and this one's going to be drawn something like this. A little bit of a stretch. Again, nothing terribly amazing, but there you go. Um, all right, and for this last frame, I'm just going to move this here. Okay, so I'll create another uh, keyframe, and it's going to be something like this. It's not stretching as much. And there we go. Go ahead and save. Go back to the beginning. Press play. And you can see it's definitely smoother because I filled in the second round there. And I'll go ahead and stop. Okay, so now you would go ahead and you would uh, start doing all the in-between and you would figure out, you know, where you're going to um, do this. So you could go ahead and you could do this. Um, now we're not going to really be talking about animating on ones or twos. If you have no idea what that means, uh, I'll cover that in another video. But for now, you could go ahead and you could start doing all of your in-between frames. So I'm now on frame one and I could go ahead and create a new frame. And I'd want to go ahead and say, okay, this ball is starting to move on its path. So I want to do a little bit of overlapping, create another keyframe, and I can see where it's going, so I can then really kind of figure out that one's going to be there. Okay. Again, I can create another keyframe here. There we go, something like that. Eh, it's drawn a little small. Okay, there we go. And then this one is where it's maybe going to, you know, come in. Something like that. And then it hits, and maybe I want it to then, on the next keyframe, I want it to actually squash. So I do a little bit of squashing. So it looks like it's really bouncing. There we go. And now it's rising back up. So something like that. Okay, again, something in between. And if you decide, you know what, I don't need another frame there, then just take this keyframe and just click and drag it sooner. Um, that's what animation is all about, is, is working with time um, and spacing and all that kind of stuff. Um, 
Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and move these over a little bit. Now I'm moving these individually. I'll show you in another video um, how to uh, move a batch of uh, frames. Um, okay, so I'm doing this and then this one here and something in the middle. All right, I'm going to save and you're going to watch. We'll watch this here and we'll press play. And there you go. Okay, so it has a lot of problems. It's just sliding through. It, it's not realistic at all. But um, because it has a whole bunch of um, frames, uh, you can see it's definitely smoother than what I had before. It, it definitely needs a lot of work. Even simple animations need a lot of work to give the time and care that it really needs. All right, I'm going to go ahead and stop this recording because it's, uh, it's getting a little long there. I hope this helps you out with the basics, and I just want you to play around with Krita. It's really the best thing out there for free animation. Uh, I will see you next time. Thank you.